Hello and welcome to Gundry's Guides episode 5. Sorry it's been a couple of weeks since the last one. This is going to be a deep dive into some wonderful Saturnid specimens I splashed out on recently. These, these include the largest Lepidopteran by wing area on Earth, the spectacular Cosinocera hercules. Britain has one species of Saturnid, the fabulous, fabulous Emperor Moth, which has been known in the case of the male to be able to detect the, the pheromones of the female from a distance of 8 kilometres. So that's a remarkable achievement. They do this by flying upwind through the odour plume. And if they move away from the odour plume, then they will fly left and right with respect to the wind direction until they find it again. So this means that they wouldn't want to fly upwind if they were outside of the odour plume, because then they might overshoot. So a wonderful piece of physiology and behaviour there. There are 160,000 species of moth globally. They make up 85% of the order Lepidoptera, the other 15% being the butterflies. So it's really not fair that moths are so much less well known than their more famous relatives. Lepidoptera is a word composed of the Greek for scale, Lepidos, and for wing, Ptera. These scales, which cover the wings of most of the Lepidoptera, are modified bristles, consisting of a series of tiny stacked platelets. Butterflies tend to have broad, flat scales, while moth scales are usually narrower and more hair-like. But with 160,000 species of the latter, as I said, there is room for a heck of a lot of variation. Scales are usually pigmented, as here, but some types are iridescent. <clears throat> In the latter case, the thickness of the platelets is similar to the wavelength of visible light. So these areas are iridescent, with the angle of the light falling onto the wing, affecting the colour of the light reflecting off it. The morpho butterflies and the male ornithoptera, uh, see the two birdwing butterflies on this video for the latter, are classic examples of this. Scales allow butterflies and moths to have vivid or just indistinct patterns, which help to protect the animal from, by concealment, camouflage, mimicry and or warning. Scales can provide insulation and dark scales allow sunlight to be absorbed and so it may have a role in thermoregulation. British Lepidoptera are sometimes darker than southern European examples of the same species, presumably for this reason. Very many butterfly and moth species also use mimicry. The Heliconius butterflies of the Americas are famous for, as examples of malarian mimicry, in which two or more unpalatable species share the same colouring, so as to share the costs of educating each generation of newly born predators to link that coloration to unpalatability. And they really are unpalatable. Ingesting a monarch butterfly will cause vomiting in a passerine bird within a few seconds. The more famous form of mimicry is Batesian mimicry, where a palatable species resembles an unpalatable one. Mimicry is not just visual. There is a species of unpalatable tiger moth which squeaks its identity at attacking bats, which will then avoid it. Wonderfully, a palatable moth species has evolved to do the same. In i.e. in response to VAT's vocalisations, they too produce a sound. This one mimics that of the unpalatable tiger moth. So this palatable species, which will be tasty to eat, is avoided by bats as a result. It's a wonderful example of bluffing, and it's, it is an acoustic form of Batesian mimicry. The Hercules moth, shown here, does not eat as an adult, so they are lucky to live two weeks after hatching from the pupa. However, the caterpillar is something of an eating machine and can reach 54 grams at, at maturity. Found in northern Queensland and parts of New Guinea, it's yet another example of the remarkable insect life in that part of the world. The male is darker and smaller, with long tails. Although the tails of some Saturnids have been shown to confuse bats' echolocation, halving their chances of predation in some cases, I presume that in this case the tails must be related to sexual selection, because otherwise why doesn't the female have them too? With the huge female of this moth, as with a few of my birdwing butterflies, I focus very close indeed, using a macro lens with a 1.4 times converter and an extension tube, and I try to drift the specimen past the camera, using the beautiful scaled surface of the, of the huge wings as a landscape that the camera moves over, although in effect, the, although the effect is actually achieved by moving the specimen. However, there are a number of, number of technical issues, including pulling focus continually, because the depth of focus in these images is probably less than a millimeter, and moving the specimen smoothly. Any judders are ever so apparent at this magnification. 
Kath Hyde in the Cockroft Lab was able to lend me a geared microscope stage for this purpose, which is a wonderful help. I'm very grateful to her. Filming this at 60 frames a second and then slowing it down adds to the smoothness too. It is not easy at all, so please consider these clips a work in progress. Now I'm going to move on to three small but equally fabulous Saturnids of the genus Actius. This is a wonderful genus containing 40 rem remarkable species, often with tails on their hind wings. As I said earlier, it's been shown that tails w are effective in confusing uh, bat sonar or making it more less accurate is perhaps another way of looking at it um although presumably as i said if the tails are more splendid in the male then this is probably a case of sexual selection these three are all at least 15 centimeters from top to bottom so they're very impressive moths indeed i'm going to go through these relatively quickly as this video has gone on a bit already and frankly it's mostly introduction and you've already seen most of these in the images in the introduction anyway um, Actius Gronendali is Indonesian and was first described as recently as 1954, a whole 80 years after the Hercules moth. It's a stunning creature and was a pleasure to photograph, although with those delicate tails it was a great relief to get it back in its frame, safe and sound. Next we have Actius Isis, found only in Sulawesi, and its caterpillar can reach 15 grams. It's nothing like as vast as that of the Hercules moth, but still very impressive indeed. As with many Saturnids, including the Hercules moth and the Atlas moth, this species does not eat as an adult. Their short adult lifespan is dedicated to finding a mate, and then, in the female's case, a suitable food plant to lay its 150 to 250 eggs on. There's spectacular sexual dimorphism here. The female is larger, heavier built, and primarily yellow, very different to the male seen here. Finally, in this video is Actius manus. Again, this has impressive sexual dimorphism. This is a male, while the female is similar in size and shape, but pale green. Both sexes are stunning to look at. Unlike the previous species, this has a large geographical distribution. It's found throughout much of Southeast Asia, although the population that is found in Western India was defined as a new species in 2020. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. There are many more insects of mine still to shoot, and a lot more British wildlife imagery to come. Thanks for watching.